Defense News is proudly sponsored by Navy Federal Credit Union. If you're a member of our nation's armed forces, the Department of Defense, or if your family is, we'd be proud to serve you too. On this episode of Defense News Weekly, the Sergeant Major of the Army gives us an interview as his tenure in the top enlisted chair ends. Find out what the popular outgoing SMA had to say. And a groundbreaking Marine test pilot gears up for her first mission to space. Hear from the woman commanding NASA's upcoming SpaceX crew. And also a highly anticipated deal in the defense industry takes place. We'll give you the details on a major acquisition. And finally, a new study says veterans aren't using their PACT Act benefits, and some who do are getting scammed. Learn how to apply and how to stay safe. It's those stories and more in the latest in news and analysis from the Pentagon to the platoon, here on Defense News Weekly. Welcome back to Defense News Weekly. I'm Andrea Scott. In August 2019, the incoming Sergeant Major of the Army, Michael A. Grinston, entered the force's top enlisted post with a fresh perspective. Six months later, he would be leading the Army through an unprecedented pandemic response. Through his term as the SMA, Grinston has been a popular figure in the force, leaning into social media and showing up all over the place to talk to troops and hear their concerns. Grinston spoke to Military Times' Todd South just before his official time in the post expired. Here's some of what he had to say about his experience. Coming from artillery, the Army being so specific to its branches, what about that culture and what you learned as a young artilleryman do you think you carried with you as a leader moving forward in your career? Yeah, I would say all of it. <laughs> to, to, to explain, um, there's a couple of things I'm proud of that I keep reminding everybody. Number one, I'm still proud. I'm from Jasper, Alabama. Um, till the day I die, I'll be proud of that. Um, I love my hometown. And I'll also be proud that I'm artillery. <laughs> so <laughs> probably in that order, I'm proud of both of those things. Um, but it really taught me precision. You know, with artillery, you make one simple mistake and it's all bad. And even in training, those are real rounds, you know, kill real people if you make a mistake. So when you're doing a, you know, combined arms live fire and your maneuver element during a company live fire, those are real people out there. You make one mistake, you know, bad things happen. You've, I've seen mistakes happen on the gun line. So it's, it's that everything has to be exactly the way it's supposed to be. And it has to be done in a manner so quickly that you have to really train as a cohesive team. In order to fire a howitzer in 30 seconds, um, and that was the standard, that was an artillery standard for a long time, is that everybody on that crew has to work in exact sync and, and there can be no mistakes in, in a 30 second time frame. So when you hear me talk about now as a Sergeant Major Army, cohesive teams. And so uh, it's, that's it, is that I know that bond, um, when it all comes together, you can be extremely uh, you know, lethal um, or it can all go bad in a matter of just 30 seconds. So when I look back at you know, the discipline it takes to do that, the discipline it takes year after year to train to do that in 30 seconds, the, uh, the precision, the physicality of that, uh, in place of howitzer, you had six minutes. So same thing, in order to get that done in six minutes, everybody has to do their job. And if you make any mistakes, you're not gonna meet what was required. You know, why would I even talk about it? Um, well, I, I didn't want to, believe it or not. Um, someone found out 
um, because I didn't ever talk about, you know, this thing. I just wanted to be a good soldier. Uh, so one day I was, you know, told somebody, you know, where I come from, and they said, you should tell your story. So I was asked, <laughs> uh, and I, I, I gave a little pushback, um, my story of my race, and um, because I thought I would be scrutinized uh, for whatever reason. And unfortunately, um, I was right. <laughs> so uh, I was really reluctant um, to kind of share that with anybody. Um, because again, I just wanted to be a great soldier. And that's what I want to be remembered by. Uh, not that I was biracial or this or that. Um, just wanted to be the best version of myself I could be. Um, but I found out that's who I am. Um, I don't need to hide it. Um, it's not something I shot away with. I answer people's question when they ask me, what am I <laughs> nowadays? Uh, I use it, do it in a little bit nicer way than I used to, other than human, because um, I usually know what they're asking. Um, but it's just one of those things that uh, people are curious. And I think I gotta be a little bit more open when people start asking me, oh, your hair's kind of curly. Well, your eyes sure are green. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, they're, they're trying to ask in the nicest of ways. And I think most of the time they don't mean anything by it. You know, I think as we come out of, you know, the global war on terror, we're still there, we've still got troops in Iraq and Syria. I remind everybody that all the time. Um, I think the Army, like culture that we talked about earlier, is going to be super important. You know, you have to prepare for combat every day. Um, my favorite question when people ask me, like, what? why are you working out so hard? What are you doing? What are you training for? Army, combat, I don't know what to tell you. That's the way I've been, I've looked at my life uh, the whole time. I said, well, when the Army calls, am I gonna be physically and mentally fit? You can't make that up. You can't go, oh, I wish I was in better shape. Um, man, I wish I'd uh, qualified with my weapon a little bit more. I wish that I'd known my soldiers a little better before we deployed. I wish I knew their families. <laughs> it's like, no, that works when you're getting on the plane. You can wish it, but it's too late. Um, so I think the Army's gonna come out of that same area. Um, you know, we went through, you know, 20 plus years of, you know, combat um, and that identity of getting ready for what. Um, but here's what I know. When the world calls, we better be ready. It's a case of hurry up and stay for the Space Force. Officials said recently that U.S. Space Force Command Headquarters would remain in Colorado instead of moving to Alabama. The home of the headquarters had been a matter of debate for a long time before the Biden administration made a decision at the turn of the month. The command for the military's newest branch will remain in Colorado Springs. After the break, we talked to a trailblazing Marine turned astronaut about her upcoming mission. Stick around. Welcome back to Defense News Weekly. The past week, the defense industry has been buzzing with news. So for a breakdown of the latest, it's time for defense dollars. A longtime Army acquisitions officer died in a plane crash near Aberdeen Proving Ground in Maryland on July 25th. Anthony W. Potts was the only person aboard a single engine plane when it crashed in a field. Until weeks ago, Potts led the Program Executive Office Command Control and Communications Tactical, or PEO C3T. Potts grew up in Kentucky and was commissioned as an Army Aviation Second Lieutenant in 1986. He served in Desert Shield, Desert Storm, Enduring Freedom, and Iraqi Freedom, and also was an attack helicopter platoon leader in Germany. He recently led PEO C3T, which develops, deploys, and supports radios and other battlefield communications gear. He previously was at PEO Soldier, 
which deals with equipment such as uniforms, body armor, night vision, and weapons that soldiers carry. A highly anticipated deal has finally closed. L3 Harris has acquired Aerojet Rocketdyne for $4.7 billion. The company sees the move as enabling more opportunities in missile defense systems, hypersonics, and advanced engine markets. And the name isn't going to change much. It's now Aerojet Rocketdyne, an L3 Harris Technologies company. Ross Niebergall is the president of the new segment. Until the merger, he served as Vice President and Chief Technology Officer at L3 Harris. L3 Harris's other business segments are Space and Airborne Systems, Integrated Mission Systems, and Communication Systems. You may remember that Lockheed Martin previously attempted to acquire Aerojet for $4.4 billion until the Federal Trade Commission sued to block the deal in January 2022. Senator Elizabeth Warren had raised concerns for that deal and also asked the Pentagon to carefully review this latest deal for any potential conflicts. So L3 Harris announced the deal last Friday, just two days after the FTC told the company that it wouldn't block it. Soldiers can expect to lasso in some increasingly popular anti-tank capabilities. PEO Soldier, the program executive office in charge of soldier gear and weapons, announced the Low Altitude Stocking and Strike Ordnance Venture, also known as LASSO. The one-way drone that explodes on impact is tailored for infantry brigade combat teams. The office called the need urgent amid the popularity of similar drones being used in the war in Ukraine. You've seen it in commercial drones strapped with explosives, as well as purpose-built munitions. Marine Corps Lieutenant Colonel Jasmine Mobelli has always dreamed of exploring the stars, and now it's becoming a reality. With years of training under her belt, this scientific research mission is scheduled for launch on August 15th, marking her inaugural voyage into space. Military Times' Jonathan Lairfeld caught up with the astronaut before her journey. Have a look. And I'm Jonathan Lairfeld I'm with Military Times and very interested in hearing more about your story and your career from being a Marine uh, to, to joining NASA. So I have a handful of questions for you. Okay, I'm ready to go. <laughs> well, I'd love to hear more about why you decided to first join the military and when you decided to transition from um, that career path to NASA. So I was interested in joining the military from a pretty young age. Uh, I was also interested in becoming an astronaut from a pretty young age. And thankfully those two things um, worked out together very well. I wanted to join the military for I think a variety of reasons. One, my family had a history of military service in Iran. And I remember my grandfather coming to visit us in the States and telling me about his time in the Navy when I was younger. So from a very young age, uh, I had that interest and then the idea of service to country was something really important to me. You know, my parents came from Iran, so I think I was very aware of the opportunities this country has given me. And then teamwork. I've always, uh, I've always played on uh, sports that were team sports, and so that idea of camaraderie really appealed to me. Would you say that the process of becoming a Marine or the process um, currently uh, becoming an astronaut has been more challenging? I'd say probably becoming a Marine was more challenging. Um, you know, for me, a, a lot of my time in the Marine Corps, I think is what set me up for this experience not to be as challenging. I think you just touched on this, but were there experiences from your time in the Marine Corps that have lent well to your work as an astronaut? There have been so many things uh, from my time in the Marine Corps that, that carry over directly and have served me very well here. Um, from basic things such as leadership skills, um, working together as a team. You know, I have the honor of uh, serving as the commander of the Crew 7 mission on my first uh, space flight. And I think that is partially in, uh, uh, due to the fact that uh, I learned those leadership skills from the Marine Corps. Um, everything we do at NASA is, is as a team and especially on orbit, you know, there are just a little over a handful of us living and working together. Um, 
for long durations. So learning how to do that. My time as a test pilot has served me very well. This is a time in spaceflight where we have more new vehicles and different vehicles than we've ever had before. And uh, looking at how we humans interact with those vehicles and the interface between is something that I learned uh, directly from being a test pilot to basic things like public speaking. I used to be terrified and have horrible stage fright, but in the Marine Corps, I had to brief every single time I flew a flight, brief over and over and over again. And so eventually I got comfortable with it. Are there um, things that you've learned from other folks who have preceded you, like Colonel Nicole Mann, who also was a Marine, is a Marine, and um, then transitioned to their time as an astronaut? Yes, Colonel Mann has been a great resource for me. Um, we try to, to, to connect and, and talk on the phone um, probably every couple months and then and message in between. And anytime I have questions, I'm pretty quick to, to reach out to her. But she's been a great resource for me, especially um, also serving as the commander of a spacecraft uh, crew dragon, SpaceX crew dragon on her first flight as well. What impact do you think that um, your experience and Colonel Mann's experience will have on other women service members or women in general who are interested in joining the astronaut corps? I, I hope it's something that just um, shows uh, women and service members out there that this is this is something they can do and not only something they do, but something that the military has probably set them up very well for. So um, I hope they just recognize that this is a, a door that might be open to them as well. Well, thank you. I know you have limited time. I appreciate it um, and have sure. a good thank and safe you. trip. Thank you. Take care. When we return, our personal finance expert talks you through the ins and outs of home equity. Welcome back. On this edition of Money Minute, Navy Federal Credit Union personal finance expert, Jeanette Mack, offers tips on tapping into your home's value. Got equity? If you're a homeowner and you think your home's value has appreciated enough to tap into it, you're not alone. More Americans are considering a home equity loan in 2023 than they did last year. The equity in your home can make it possible to do a variety of things to help you achieve goals, financial and otherwise. Most families choose to reinvest it into their home by using the funds to renovate. At the end of your project, you may end up with more equity by increasing the value of your home. You can also use your equity to pay off debt, college tuition, or a new car. Either way, your next decision should be whether you go for a straight equity loan or a home equity line of credit. With a home equity loan, you're borrowing a percentage of your equity in a lump sum you pay back over a set period of time. While a home equity line of credit, also called a HELOC, it's more like a prepaid credit card. You can use the funds over time, paying off only what you actually use. Talk with a mortgage lender you trust to walk you through your options so you can maximize your equity and make the most of your plans. Thanks, Jeanette. We'll see you next week. To get more coverage of military and defense topics, pop some purple smoke and check out Army, Navy, Air Force, and MarineCorpsTimes.com as well as DefenseNews.com. And to get a daily debrief on all the latest news, sign up for our Early Bird Brief newsletter, compiled each morning to bring you the latest headlines. It's also an audio. Check out the podcast version out each weekday wherever you get your podcasts. And if social media is where you get your open source intelligence, follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. When we return, we hear about a looming deadline for the PACT Act that you might qualify for, and a scam that's targeting those who already are receiving benefits. Stick around. Welcome back to Defense News Weekly. I'm Andrea Scott. The passing of the PACT Act in 2022 expanded access to VA healthcare benefits for veterans exposed to burn pits, Agent Orange, and other toxic substances. There are two major problems at the moment, according to an AARP report. Nearly two-thirds of service members are unaware that they can receive free assistance with the benefits from the Department of Veterans Affairs. And on top of that, scammers are targeting veterans with ploys related to the PACT Act. We spoke with AARP's expert on the topic, Troy Broussard. 
Troy, welcome back. Hello, it's a pleasure to be back with you. Thank you for having me. Troy, the PACT Act has only been uh, been around for a little bit. Can you explain to our viewers what the PACT Act is and how it might affect them? Yes, uh, the PACT Act is a, it stands for an acronym. It's the Promise to Address Comprehensive Toxic Acts. And what it does, it, it expands access to VA health care benefits for veterans that were exposed to burn pits, Agent Orange, and other toxic substances. It was approved by law on August 10th, 2022. And now, uh, by August 9th, by midnight, if you if 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 um, your veterans go ahead and apply for this um, this act, they can be retro. The benefits will be retroactive to the original date of August 10th. So we definitely want to make sure um, increase the awareness of that with our veterans. And who's eligible for it? It opened up to um, you know nearly five million new veterans. Uh, it was signed into law on August tenth, twenty twenty two, and then on August 9th, um, by midnight, um, those who sign up for the PACT Act uh, will be able to have their benefit, whatever that whatever benefit that they earn from that from that um, that submission, it would be retro ba retrofitted back to um, August tenth. So it's extremely important that we want to share uh, about the awareness about the PACT Act, because what we're finding is that veterans are being targeted because of their overall lack of awareness of the new law. And we want to make sure that we share uh, that information. We did a recent survey where two thirds of veterans are unaware that they can receive free assistance uh, with these benefits through the VA. And how do you know that you might be eligible for this? Is it because you were around burn pits uh, overseas? Yes, if, if it, you're, you're exposed to burn pits, Agent Orange, or other toxic substances, and that has opened it up to an approximately f 5 million new veterans that weren't uh, eligible for it before. So we recommend that veterans that are you know listening to the program today, if you have not, please go ahead and, and submit a, a file to file a claim for this uh, benefit. And AARP is reporting that there's already scammers lo looking out for people re receiving these benefits. W what's going on there? What we're seeing is that we, we've done a, a, a survey and we're finding that one in 10 veterans are being approached by someone, you know, offering assist with enrollment for these benefits, you know, saying that they can give them a guaranteed lucrative offer, a lu lucrative payout. So we want to make folks aware of the PACT Act but also aware of some of these red flags that we need to watch and be very mindful of as it relates to um, the PACT Act and as it relates to you know, them you know, sc you know, being scammed or, or, or targeted by scammers. Why are scammers targeting veterans and their families? These scammers know that veterans and military families, they have um, the access to these resources and they have access to these benefits. Um, like civilians do not have. So it makes them a larger target. They have the steady income, veterans also. And then also there's a military jargon that, that happens, uh, a, a sense of trust, okay? And these scammers understand that. And then that opens it up for, you know, even more scams. So we just want to make sure if veterans receive some type of um, offer um, talking about anything dealing with their their earned benefits or, or resources or anything along those lines, um, and, and, and it requires payment, that is an absolute scam because veterans never pay for their records, for their service records or earned benefits. Do you have ways to spot these scams? Uh, you, you talked about how they go through them. What should yeah. people look out for specifically? And specifically, look out for those red flags of individuals calling you and trying to get you in a heightened state to make a quick decision. Uh, we want to prevent that. We have specific resources that we have, Daniel, at aarp.org slash veterans, uh, where we have our Vets Fraud Center that lets you know about the PACT Act, PACT Act fraud as well, and those scams. And then we also have the Health Benefits Navigator that will prepare you for your visit when you go to the VA so that you can have a seamless experience there and just be prepared to, to sign up for the PACT Act through that. So, so we have those resources that are there and available to support veterans and, and military families. And Troy, I have to tell you, you've been coming on the show uh, throughout the years now talking talking about scams and really yes. raising, raising awareness. Someone the other day called me from my credit card company, quote unquote, and said, uh, 
started asking me questions and I said, Hey, I'm happy to listen to your pitch, yes. but uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to answer any questions just right away. They hung up. You know, that experience right there lets us know that, you know, if we, 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 we're, if we're not at a heightened sense of sensitivity to make a quick answer, but very calm, relaxed and said, no, I'm not interested or, you know, no, thank you. Have a great day. They're, they will immediately get off the phone because they're going to, they're trying to call someone else. So if we can save one person at a time, that's going to be the key. That's what we want to do. So that's a good thing. And that August 9th deadline is for an intent to file with the Department of Veterans Affairs. You don't have to complete the entire disability claim, just the intent. The form for that is available for download at va.gov. And that's all we have time for this week. Please visit us on militarytimes.com and defensenews.com for more coverage. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next week.